In this first unit, you will be using only a notepad, or if you use a use a uh, Macintosh. How many of you will be using Macintoshes at home? Okay, I suggest that you get download Text Wrangler, which I believe is free for if you have a Mac. That is what I use to work with here, and that will serve you well within the next several things. Okay, the first thing that you need to do whenever you are uh, making a website is you need to create a folder for it and pay no attention to the large quantity of trash on my desktop. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call this, you can call it whatever you want. And making the folder is the only time that you can use spaces. But generally, even here, you don't want to use spaces because if you have to upload the whole folder to a website, you don't want any spaces, you don't want any funky characters like, you know, apostrophes or question marks or anything like that, just letters and numbers. And generally, you want to be all lowercase letters because a lot of servers are case sensitive. So if you, like, put a, call the folder by a capital letter here and then further on down the line, you put this folder into a website and then try to link to it and you use a lowercase letter, it's not going to find it. So, like, say I want to just call this IMED 1316, which I may already have one here. Nope, it's going to let me do it. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to save my things in here. And we're going to talk about file structure. Actually, let's go ahead and make file structure in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new folder inside. I'm going to call this images. I could also call this maybe assets or really anything I want to do. But it's important that you keep this file structure. Don't be making references to, you know, documents that are somewhere outside. Like, don't call a, an image that is sitting on your desktop for a web page that is inside of this folder. Because things are going to get lost that way. Links will get broken. So everything that you need for your website should go inside of this folder and will be linked accordingly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to open up, you can't see it because I'm outside of my view here, but I'm going to go ahead and I am going to open um, on a Windows machine, it's going to be accessories and I'm going to use notepad. I'm not going to use WordPad, that's the other option here, but WordPad saves some other information under the, under the scenes, behind the scenes that will actually mess up your files. So you don't want to do that. You want to use Notepad. And Macintosh, again, I, I recommend Text Wrangler, but you can look, if you do a Google search for, you know, a good uh, text editor for HTML editing, anything is okay. I'm not, going, I'm not going to recommend that. But you just want a real basic text editor at this point in time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad. Okay, so here's my notepad, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this very first page. And I'm going to find that folder in my, on my desktop where I saved it, but yours could be anywhere, maybe in your documents or something. I'm at 1316. Now this is really important, because no, right now this is just a regular flat out text file, right? I don't want it to be a text file. I'm going to save it as a .html file. Now, I can call my first page either default .html or I can call it index.html. It's important that you use one of those two names. Don't call it page one or something like that. The reason why you have to use one of those two names is because servers look for those two words. So when you boot up like Amazon.com, you don't have to type Amazon.com slash index.html or .php or ASPX or whatever it is they're using because the server knows to look for index or default. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to save this as index replacing that .txt and I'm going to say .html. This is what will allow the computer to know 
that it's a web page we're looking at as opposed to a regular text file. This so will let the computer know that instead of opening it up with the text editor, it should open it up with whatever your browser is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now the other things, whenever we have a, a browser opening up our pages, we have to let the browser know that we're actually talking in HTML. Because there are other forms of pages, like I said, there's PHP, there's JavaScript pages, there's ASPX pages, whatever. And we need to let the browser know that this block of code that we are executing right now is HTML. Now whenever you use something like this, we have what we call the opening tag and the closing tag. All of our code that is related to this needs to be between those two opening and closing tags. Web page is made up, just like you are, of a head. So I have to open and close my head. And a body. Now I can also, just for readability, start tabbing these things in. So usually my head and body tag, I don't, I don't really tab in. But you can use tabs or whatever spaces inside of your HTML, whatever you need to do to make it more readable. A browser does not care about what's called white space. So if I skip this here, this is called white space. Browser doesn't care. It can read it regardless. That's why if you open up a page like, for instance, uh, let's open up this page, and I go to... Um, look at the source, which I should be able to do with my web tools. I've snagged it here. I'm an Internet Explorer. I hate Internet Explorer. Let me open up Firefox. We will be using Firefox as the uh, illustrator of choice, or as the browser of choice. You want to have both uh, Firefox and Internet Explorer and maybe one other thing, Safari or something, because you do it in any web page that you make, you want to look at it in multiple browsers. However, Firefox comes with multiple tools. And it has these web developer tools, which are awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my web console here. See if I can move this whole thing up. Is it going to let me move it up? Come on, there we go. So I can see my web console. Page source, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I totally lost my train of thought here. But this is the page that this is made up of. This is the code. And this was actually done a lot by hand by people but likes of Vivian. But let's go to Microsoft or something. Or MSN. Is it MSN.com? Actually, they're not too bad. Let's, oh, that's ours. View page source. See? Theirs is a lot less readable. So much text. But the thing is, is that they don't really care about readability. And my point here is that white space doesn't matter. You can use white space to help make something readable like our NBC pages. Or, you know, when they don't really care if you can read it or not. Then you can have it just all in big bunches. So you can tell some of this was probably done by hand by a real person because it does have white space, but a lot of this stuff is just junk. It's garbage. But these are this is the code that makes the internet run, basically, the HTML code. It makes the pretty pictures. It makes the pretty pictures. Well, it doesn't make the pretty pictures. You gotta make the pretty pictures, but it tells the pretty pictures to all go together. Okay, anyway, so white space does not matter. 
Now inside of the head, you're going to get the things that don't actually show on the page. For instance, if you're going to embed cascading style sheet CSS information, that will go in here. If you're going to link to a JavaScript file, that will go in here. If you're going to put in metadata, um, you know, like meta keywords or something like that, stuff that doesn't actually show on the page, that's all going to go into the head. But for this particular assignment, I don't really want to talk about that at that moment because I want to focus on what's down in here. The stuff that is in the body, now that's the stuff that actually shows on the page. So I can say in here, I can put a title, for instance. I'm going to do H1, which is a heading, and H1 is the biggest header that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hello. Hello world. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now if you look at my folder here, you see that I have my index. If I pop that open, there's my page. Woohoo! And I have hello world right there. Yay! So that's the basics. Now if I wanted to start putting images and things on this page, I would go ahead and I would save them. <laughs> Just going to drag this. I'd rather be. I'm going to have to rename it because it's not named properly. Put that down here in the images folder. Now, what's wrong with that name? There's spaces, there's capitals, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Um, just going to call it rather for simplicity. This is a student proje project. I'm sure they'll love it that I put it in here. Hopefully nobody in this class, anybody recognize it? So now I can say image img source equals, and I called this folder what? Images? Right. I called the folder images. I have to tell it, since this is saved outside of here, and I have to go into that folder, I have to tell it to go into the images folder. Otherwise, it would be looking for rather out here flat, right, sitting right next to it. Yeah, you have to tell it to open up the images folder. So I'm going to say images slash rather dot jpg, which is I think is what we called it, right? Do I have a space there? Now, since images, I don't really I don't know if I can need to close it or not. Let's go ahead and save that. I think I can do it just like that. There we go. So now it pulled up my picture. Yay! Now I can make this actually a link if I want to. by making an href, hyperreference. Whenever you make a hyperreference, and I'm actually going to go out here and close this tag just for fun, because I have to open and close my tags, and I want that thing right there to be what I click on. So I'm going to say href equals um, HTTP. You have to put in the whole address. Now you can see there's a purple line around the picture. What does that indicate? A it's a link, right? That indicates it's a link. And I click it and it opens up alamo.edu. Cool, right? Once you start getting into code, you start feeling all powerful. You're all like, I can do kung fu, right? And now so I said, I can, so much power, right? So I'm not going to go over this in super duper detail. Because we have a tool here where you can go over it in super duper detail. So if you go to uh, W3Schools.org, 
Amazon.com. This is our textbook. Remember we talked about our textbook in here? So you're going to go into Learn HTML. Not Learning HTML5, because basically HTML5 builds on the core of HTML. So you got to learn the basic core of HTML first, and then you can focus on the changes that HTML5 adds, the additions. Um, so you're going to hit this Learn HTML. And the cool thing about this is, is if you read it, it will walk you through things and then you say try it yourself. You hit these try it yourself answers things and it gives you this and you can go ahead and play with things like what would happen if I put in HTML2 or H H2. It makes it smaller. And you can go in these things and play with the code and make all the samples. And they have also in here uh, yeah it's really it's pretty slick so start learning HTML now you're gonna click and it will walk you through everything you need to know this is a paragraph web browsers wow this is looking really familiar isn't it so just walk through this and then you're going to hit next chapter. And you can do the samples as does it try it yourself. But just flip through this and read this and it gives you the samples and teaches you all the tags. Now the nice thing also is you can learn here HTML elements. It will teach you what the tags are. Links, heading, attributes, how to add images, how to add tables, blocks, layouts. But really, actually, I think this is all the Learn HTML. If you flip through, you can do the next chapter. Next chapter. So I want you to read through these, do the samples, and your assignment is to create what I call the ugly website. Okay, the ugly website is basically something just like this. It does not have to be pretty. It does not have to be colored. It can have everything left justified. I don't care because learning to make things colored and changing the font and, and putting things in different positions, that's CSS. And if you look at our handy dandy uh, web thing, which I closed. you'll see that CSS is actually a little bit later on. So this particular project is called Ugly because it's only using HTML tags and making pictures. Yeah, you see CSS comes next. That's what starts making web pages pretty and changes what they look like, the cascading style. Right now, you're just worried about these things. So what you're going to do is what you want to have started, because I want you over this next week to go through that W3C Schools website, learn the basics of code, at least get your web pages about yourself started because remember this is about you this project you're going to come up here and talk about yourself and show your web page so it should be about you about my pets about what I want to study you know whatever stuff like that at least one page but you can make multiple pages that link to each other if you so choose um, and the assignments how it will be graded so if you go here and you look at ugly web page I'll probably put a link in that page so you can see it will go directly to the rubric. I'm looking for a proper file structure, which means that folder, everything is in one folder. And you have the folder inside the folder for your images. So if, I don't want all your images and pages all thrown in one folder. I do want multiple folders or at least one folder embedded in another one and everything within that. I want to make sure that all of your pages are properly named. There's no capital letters, there's no funky characters anywhere. Okay? Um, Want to make sure that you have 
Your page is called index. You have that HTML tag, head tag, title tag, and body tags, which you will learn more about when you go into the HTML school. Um, div tags, which you'll learn about. Div tags basically just wrap around things. For instance, if I want to, let me see, close this. Open with Notepad. Oh, it's behind it. There it is right there. Look at that. Oh, by the way, that is a way to get yourself in all kinds of trouble if you have more than one open. Because you'll make changes on one, save it, then you go back to this one and start working on it, and your changes... Your changes, if you save this, will be gone. So if you start seeing that you make changes and save, and then you go back and you think that you make the changes and your changes are no longer there, chances are you have more than one interface, one notepad open. Okay, div tags are real simple. I'm going to wrap it around this stuff. That's like division or something. Also, you'll see it now called a lot. Um, well, the nice thing about div tags is right now they're not going to do anything. But as soon as we get into cascading style sheets, that is what you will use to position things on the page. You don't move the image itself. You move a div, a division. So I want to see those in your code, not so much because you're going to do anything with them this time around, but more because... It is how we will do placement and things once we get into the next part of the assignment. Uh, let's see, where else are we? Did I get rid of the page? I did. Man, I closed it again. Man, I annoy myself sometimes. Assignments, ugly web page. Okay, the tags at a minimum, this is what I want you to use. The P tag, the H1 tag, H2 tag, A tag, which is your anchor tag, image tag. You've already seen these. This is an unordered list, an ordered list, and a break. You're going to learn all about those in the W3C schools one. I can show you what they are uh, real quick. But those are, by the way, I'll show you here more, but these are the minimum tags. That is the very basic. As you go through and you go through the W3C schools, the W3 schools website and go through the lessons that they have, you're going to learn about other tags and you can go ahead and employ anything you want. Try to make all kinds of stuff work, right? But at a minimum, I'm going to look for these. Other stuff is bonus. Not necessarily like points or anything, but it'll brownie points, yes. Okay. Um, what I say I would show real quick? Oh, a list. Say UL. Let's do a unordered list. Okay, whenever you have a list, you have to open it and close it. Then you can make list items.
Now you can see here why starting to tab things in is going to be kind of handy. I have my unordered list, and then I have my items inside of that unordered list. So tabbing things in and spacing things out becomes kind of a handy thing. So how does this look? Here's my unordered list. If I want to have this linked to more than one page, which I assume that you will, I can go ahead and file, save this as, since I already have the structure, I'll just call this page two. I'm going to delete all this stuff out of here. I'll leave that. go back and open up my index, uh, open with notepad, do I have to put a folder here, like up here I say images rather, do I need a folder, no. why not, because it's in the root. It's sitting there right next to it, inside of that folder. So I don't need to put a folder. I can just call directly page2.html. Okay, notice here that I am putting this making sure that I have these things inside. My A tags are both inside of my L tags, my link list item tags. I don't want to say instead of putting this out inside of there, a lot of times you'll see things like this. This is called nesting error. You don't want to have nesting errors. Right now it would probably work just fine. As you get further down the line, that's going to be bad. So I want to make sure that my tags are properly nested. My anchor tags, my A tag, is inside of my list item. My list items here are inside of my root. My root, or my inside of my body, and my body tag inside of the HTML. You don't want to get your tags out of order. That's why a lot of times you'll see people type the open tag, the closed tag, then put the cursor inside and start typing. Because you don't want to get nesting errors. Okay. Index. See this is now purple. It's a link. And I go to page two. So it's a pretty simple assignment. But I want it to be about you because it's going to be your introductory introductory thing. Okay. Do you pretty much have an understanding of what you're doing? Awesome. <laughs>